Facts about the skin. Skin colour is determined by cells in the epidermis. Those cells are known as melanocytes, which secrete a pigmented substance called melanin. The more melanin in the cells, the darker the skin. Having too little or too much melanin can lead to some skin colour disorders. On one end of the spectrum are conditions like vitiligo or vitiligo, which occurs when some melanocytes lose the ability to produce melanin, resulting in whitest patches on the skin, and albinism, a condition in which melanocytes don't produce any melanin. On the other end is hyperpigmentation, the presence of excess melanin, which can cause darker patches of skin. Your skin could weigh more than 20 pounds. The skin accounts for 50% of your body weight, says Tora Patel, MD, a board certified dermatologist and supervising physician at DNA Dermatology in Chicago and a clinical instructor of medicine at Northwestern University. This makes it your body's largest organ. According to that calculation and data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, an average American woman weighs 168.5 pounds and carries more than 25 pounds of skin. An average man weighing 195.7 pounds will have nearly 30 pounds of skin. Tattoos stay put thanks to cells called macrophages. If your skin cells shed every month, how do tattoos stick around? It turns out to be a function of your immune system. The puncture of the tattoo needle causes inflammation in the dermis, the skin's middle layer. In, re in response, white blood cells known as macrophages are sent in to help heal the damage. These macrophages eat the dye and can pass it to newer macrophages when they die off. So the pigment is essentially transferred from one cell to another. Any leftover pigment is soaked up by the fibroblasts, which are longer lasting skin cells that don't regenerate as often. Early lasers designed for tattoo removal are strong enough to kill off the macrophages and fibroblasts that hold the dye. Ancient Egyptians put salt and other foods in their wounds. Injuring or breaking the skin's dermis, the layer below the epidermis can expose the inner tissues to pathogens. To prevent infections from reaching any further into the skin, body fat or muscle ain't body fat or muscle, ancient Egyptians cared for topical wounds with salt, fresh meat, moldy bread and onions. Well, while these may seem like unsanitary things to put on a cut, modern research has found that there was actually merit in their methods. With its high iron content, meat was a good blood coagulant and recommended for the first day of a wound according to a 2016 paper in the Journal of the German Society of Dermatology. Salt and onions are both astringent, which can stop blood flow. Moldy bread likely had antibacterial properties, a very early form of penicillin, you might say. Skin wounds would then be sealed with a combination of oils, fats, honey, and plant fibers. Your body's fluid balance depends on the skin. Your skin is a significant shield against billions of tiny microbes and pathogens, but just as importantly, skin keeps fluids in. Another way to think of this, Patel says, is that your skin resembles a brick and mortar pattern. The bricks are the cells. The mortar is made up of lipids, fatty, acid, fatty acids, and other sticky proteins that form the watertight layer. If you have any holes in the skin where moisture can escape, which are more susceptible to damage, that leads to dryness, cracking and inflammation, Patel says. People who have suffered burns of often have fluid balance problems, says Robert T. Brodel, MD Professor of Dermatology at University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson, Mississippi. Fluids are seeping out and they can't keep them balanced internally. This can be incredibly dangerous because fluid loss can cause the heart to stop pumping blood to the rest of the body. Dehydration, hypertension and other problems may also occur when the skin is injured. A skin condition can put you at greater risk of other diseases. 
Psoriasis is an, is an autoimmune condition in which the skin cells in an affected area grow rapidly, leading to excess skin buildup, inflammation, and a red and scaly rash. While it can be uncomfortable to live with the condition on its own, studies have shown that inflammation of the skin can lead to inflammation of other tissues and internal organs and eventually certain diseases. For example, psoriasis has been linked to a greater risk for heart disease as well as diabetes, Crohn's disease, metabolic syndrome, and other conditions thought to be correlated with inflammation. Patel says that association makes treatment even more important. If one organism flinch, you have to make sure another isn't. Your legs may be the driest part of your body. Unless you live in the tropics, you've probably noticed that the skin of your lower legs becomes dry in winter and there's a, bio- there's a biological reason for that. You have fewer oil glands on your legs than any other area of your body. Oil or sebaceous glands found near the dermis's border with the epidermis secrete an oily substance called sebum that lubricates skin and hair. As people age, the glands secrete less oil and that means drier skin. Winter's low humidity and our tendency to spend more time around heat sources dry sources dries out skin even more. The solution is to install a humidifier or apply some moisturizer. Certain skincare products such as those with emulsifiers like sodium lauryl sulfate can also dry or irritate your skin, so read your labels carefully.